So good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to God's house. Today is our third uh, Wednesday in the season of Lent, and would you turn to the inside of your uh, worship folder for a moment? Uh, Tonight, it's all about Peter. Remember the Apostle Peter? Last week was Malchus, about which we knew nothing, hardly, and tonight, Peter himself. Uh, Our theme is the troubled heart of a denier. I want you to think about denying. There are several ways we can deny the Lord Jesus. So we're going to begin with hymn number 285, Chief of Sinners Though I Be. We'll sing all five verses. Please rise. Please turn to the uh, inside of your worship folder. We welcome those who are maybe watching at home. And uh, tonight's responses are from Psalm 130. We begin our time together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue our Lenten journey, we witness Peter's denial of Jesus. When the rooster crows, Peter is overwhelmed with guilt and remorse. Yet when Jesus rose from the dead, he restored Peter. Three times Jesus said, Be my sheep. So Peter was filled with guilt. Jesus forgives him and fills Peter with grace. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my plea for mercy. O Lord, if you should mark O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. 
I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We sing the three verses of By All Your Saints in Warfare. Please notice that verse, the second verse is about Peter. Together we pray the prayer for the night. Please join me. Holy God, mighty Lord, endless is your mercy and eternal is your reign. Your Son, our Lord Jesus, triumphed over sin and the grave and opened to all who believe in him the gates of everlasting life. Thank you for your grace that covers our shame and guilt. Help us to live a life of repentant joy and service. In Jesus' name, amen. Please take time to greet those around you this evening. You may take out your Bibles if you would. It was nice to sing that hymn on the saints. And uh, take out your Bibles and turn to 1 Peter chapter 4. I thought since we are focusing on Peter, we should hear some of his words that he wrote uh, later on, okay, to the church at large. So turn to page 1891. And we're going to read verses 12 through the end of the column there. All right? I'll give you a moment to get there. 
Okay, 1 Peter chapter 4, would you join me? Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. That's quite a phrase, isn't it? If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. This is the word of our Lord. And now please turn to John chapter 18. We're going to revisit our words from last week, okay? Page 1682, and uh, we're going to read, uh, or 1681, I guess. We'll start with verse 12 of John 18. But before we do so, as I said before, last week... Um, was about Malchus. We, we don't know anything about him, hardly at all. But we know plenty about Peter, don't we? Uh, Peter, what was his brother's name? Andrew. And Jesus called them one day while they were fishing, right? And James and John were there, their partners, their buddies. And he says, I will make you fishers of men, and they left their nets and followed him for at least a three-year journey. Think about that, leaving home. They probably went back and forth sometimes, but, but they were gone for quite a while. Peter is bold enough. You know, Peter, you got to love Peter, right? I mean, he's bold, but he gets himself in trouble. Can you think of one time he was very bold and got himself in trouble? How about when he stepped out on the on the water, right? And he said, well, come to me, Jesus says. And of course, what happened? He started, started to sink, so he needed some help, all right? Then uh, Peter says to Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And G Peter sees things a lot of the other disciples did not, like the Mount of Transfiguration. He sees the glory of the Lord, okay? And Peter also sees the drama. And I wish I should preach on that sometime. I, I don't know if I ever have. But the drama of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and the intensity of that. Remember, as he takes Peter, James, and John with him, he was exposed to that praying. Um, Peter also says to Jesus, even though all the others leave you, I will never leave you. I will die for you. And now we come to tonight. Okay, verse 12. You have to understand, notice the setting. This is important. When the denials come during the setting of what else is going on. Verse 12. Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. So they bound him, brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year, that is Caiaphas. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the priest's courtyard. Notice the setting. But Peter had to wait outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, 
came back, spoke to the girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You're not one of those, his disciples, are you? The girl at the door asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold. The servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Join me, please. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby struck him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why do you strike me? Then Annas had still bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Let's go on. As Simon Peter stood warming himself, he was asked, are you not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a rooster began to crow. We'll stop there. Keep your Bibles open. So let me just tell you, if you go through all four Gospels, record this. And I have to say, on the other Gospels are much more dramatic. And they have different details. But I want to tell you what they all agree on. Interesting stuff. They all agree there was a servant girl. They all agreed they were in the courtyard. There were three denials, and they all agree there were that, that the crooster that the crooster rode. The, oh boy, that the rooster crowed. All right. Three of them speak about the fire. Isn't that interesting? And Peter's weeping. He went out and wept bitterly. Two of them speak of Peter's cursing, that he does not know Jesus, okay? And there are some variations, but they all say Peter denies the Lord three times. I don't know the man. John is a little more, not quite so what? Brusque, if you will, or whatever the word is. John's not, but boy, you read the other ones. Jesus, John, or Peter is really, he's cursing. I don't know the man. All right. So that, that br brings us to this, the setting. The setting is in the courtyard of the residence of Caiaphas, the high priest, and his father-in-law lived, or his father lived there probably as well. They were in the same. Now you need to understand this. I found this in on my shelf in a book I've never opened before on the Passion of Christ. Okay, it was printed in 1907 in Germantown, Wisconsin. Sounds like a good Lutheran, doesn't it? Anyway, this guy had detail I never thought about. That this home, he said was probably two to three stories high, and it surrounded the courtyard. You've seen that, right? There are homes like that. You're, I think Europeans build homes like that, right? With a courtyard in the middle, a grassy area. And so there's building all around it. At one end, you have the gate, right? And you walk in, and it's a grassy outdoor area. And the interesting thing about that was, anybody want to guess? Never thought about this people in the courtyard could hear what was going on upstairs or next door or wherever it was, okay? So that's the setting. And I think that it wasn't in a courtroom. It was in the house of Caiaphas, all right? So Peter is in dangerous company. Think of Peter. 
Here he is brought in. I, I think John was the friend of the high priest. I got to figure that one out. But John seems to be listening to what's going on. Anyway, Peter is in danger. Okay. Peter is in a dangerous situation, isn't he? He's called, you are one of them. In one of the other gospels, it says, you're one of them. How would you like to be called, you're one of them? Boy, that sounds bad. All right. So his life was in danger. And he was in fear of being imprisoned, even killed. This was the, these were the gloomiest hours for Peter in the middle of the night. I never realized that this was probably between somewhere between 12 midnight and 3 to 4 to 5 o'clock in the morning that all this was going on. You think Caiaphas wanted to get rid of Jesus in a hurry? I think so, okay? So here we have in the middle of the night this most con confidential friend of Jesus. I like that term. This most confidential friend denies in growing stronger terms, even cursing and swearing, I don't know the man. Stay with the setting. While Peter is down there in the courtyard with the servant girl and the relative of Malchus and probably others whose servants, what's going on with Jesus? He's in one of those rooms being interrogated by Caiaphas and Annas, right? This is going on at the same time. We need to understand the setting. And here is something I would never have thought of. There's a contrast here between Peter and Jesus. We read Peter's response. In Jesus, in Jesus, we see his faithfulness and fearlessness. And what do we see in Peter? We see his faithlessness and fearfulness. I just let that sink in. That was sort of a new thing for me. In Jesus, if you, if you go back to Jesus' words, I mean, Jesus, Jesus doesn't, he, he's not cowardly. He, he says to them, he's, he, de, he denies nothing to Caiaphas. He says, listen, go and list, ask the people what I've talked about. Jesus doesn't deny anything. He is not, he's not hiding himself. He answers Caiaphas boldly, okay? But what does Peter do? It seems that Peter is, loses his nerve, that Peter maybe comes to the point of being hopeless, thinking in his own mind, what did I get hooked up to? He's going to get killed. And this could be a useless what? Cause. Here I've spent all this time with this man. Think about that. And he's going to get killed. If he is able to hear what's going on, he knows what's going on, what's going to happen, right? He's heard what people are talking about. And he knows what's the plan. Kill Jesus. And so it appears that Peter comes to the point of saying, I'm going to save myself. I've, and, he, and he does. And then the, cock, the rooster crows. And in Luke, I believe it is, you have that touching moment where Jesus is walking. Remember that? walking probably between, between areas of the house, and he looks at Peter. Remember that? I think Luke is the only one who has that. So part two. So that's the setting. It's important to know the setting. We see shame, guilt, and remorse in Peter. I want you to think about the feeling, the emotion of guilt, and the emotion of shame. What is the posture of shame and guilt? What's the posture of shame? Looking down, removing yourself, right? That's natural. When you feel ashamed, you what? You hide away. 
And isn't that exactly what Peter does? He goes out and weeps bitterly. He is filled. Uh, as someone said, maybe he thought he's worthless as a disciple. You know? All right? He was not willing. Now think about that. He was not willing to put his life on the line and die for Jesus. He talked a good game, didn't he? But now it all caught up to him. Just think of the feeling of shame and guilt that he went through. And one of the things I had forgotten about, Luke chapter 22, verse 32, it says this. Jesus says to Peter, Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Isn't that amazing? So let's stay with this shame and guilt. What about us? What about you and me? You know, I've thought about that, and I, you know, as going through this voice of the martyrs that we're, I'm giving you a story every week, and thinking about the history of people who, whose lives were put on the line for the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they are still on the line for the gospel of Jesus Christ. What about us? If you go to the service of confirmation in our hymn book, remember your service of confirmation? It says this. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession of faith, that's the Nicene Creed, and in the Holy Christian Church, to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? And our answer, I do so intend with the help of God. From the history of the early church, in those first centuries, we know one of the problems was that many of the believers, when they, were, when they were asked either to deny Christ and lose their life, or deny Christ and save their lives, or otherwise, many of them denied Christ. And one of the problems in the early church was, what do we do with the, what did they call them? The backsliders. What do we do with them? And the answer was, we will accept them as they confess their sins, primarily because of Peter. As I thought about this this week, let's admit, folks, our faith is not that great. Okay, let's just admit it. I thank God I'm saved by grace through faith and not by faith through grace. Okay? We can have all have our weak moments. We can all fall in temptations. And who knows how you would respond and how I would respond if my life or your life was threatened as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. You ever think about that? I have. And I'd like to think, well, I'll, I'll be faithful. <laughs> but knowing our weak, sinful human nature, we may not be far behind Peter as well. The good news is what happens in John chapter 21. That's where they're, they're fishing after the resurrection. Peter and the disciples are with Jesus. And Jesus comes to him and he says, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Remember the threefold question? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my sheep. On the third one, Peter got a little frustrated, didn't he? Lord, you know that I love you. Why do you keep asking me? Feed my sheep. You know what that was? That was the reinstatement of Peter. Jesus now reaccepts him and gives him a new job and a new focus. And you'll find the new Peter. You know where you'll find the new Peter? In the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 2. Where he preaches the Pentecost Sunday sermon. 
Peter is the leader in the early Christian church in Jerusalem. He is the man. And I went online today and found out Peter was, finally did give up his life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Tradition has it he was crucified upside down. We're not sure if that's true, but that's the tradition. And he gave up his life. And you know, it's amazing, isn't it, that the early church didn't hide this from us? You ever think about that? The early gospel writers could have said, we can't, we can't record this. That's embarrassing. It shows what? The truthfulness and the honesty of the early believers, and it shows the honesty and truthfulness of Peter. Because Peter was willing. He didn't hide his failure. He, he allowed it to be presented. Because what was more important to Peter than his failure? the loving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins for his denial. Everybody understand that? Denial takes on several forms. Denial can take on abandonment, can it? Where you just simply abandon the Lord Jesus Christ. You have nothing more to do with him and his kingdom. Denial could be giving up his teachings, giving up his, his teachings in the scriptures and turning it into something else. By the way, that's happening big time in many parts of America today where Jesus will keep, but we don't want to keep his teachings. Think about that. So finally, let me say this. I love this phrase. The risen Jesus pours the balm of healing kindness into the troubled heart of a denier. Isn't that a wonderful thing? He pours the, the, the healing kindness, the balm of the healing kindness into the heart. So let me say to you, when you and I are tempted to doubt or even deny the Lord Jesus or something of that nature, we should pray this prayer. Jesus, pray for me. Pray for us sinners, now and in the hours of our trials and temptations. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue with the offering of our tithes and gifts to the Lord Jesus, and then we're going to sing the hymn for the night, hymn 368, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
Before you put your hymn books away, turn in the front to page 273. And uh, this evening we're going to use responsive prayer two, okay? So we're gonna, before we do that, we're going to uh, continue with the prayers for the night. And I'm gonna give you time for private prayer, okay? So let us pray. Your Father in heaven, on this Wednesday evening in the season of Lent, we again, dear Lord, hear of a great saint who denied you and who came to repentance. Dear Lord, through this season of Lent, we do hear again and again stories from the scriptures of the necessity to repent of our sin and to find your grace, mercy, and forgiveness that covers up and removes our shame, our guilt, and our remorse. Dear Lord, help us to deal with guilt in a healthy way, to recognize that we are far from perfect, that we fail so much. But dear Lord, may that guilt and shame replace and cover our sin, our sin be covered by your grace. Dear Lord, bless us this night. We pray for our family and our loved ones, wherever they might be. And this evening, dear Lord, we take time for private and personal prayer for those people who are on our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy. Secondly, dear Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for an end to the hostilities and warfare in Ukraine. Dear Lord, bring the heads of state together, not only in those countries, but around the world, to bring an end to this bloodshed. Dear Lord, be with all those whose lives are in danger, wherever they might be, and may your holy angels protect them. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, dear Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray. We thank you for this day. We pray that you will send us more rain in the days ahead to replenish this dry land. Into your hands, we commend all for whom we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So we will use responsive prayer two this night, and uh, then later we'll rise for the closing hymn. So let us begin. Holy God, holy and most gracious Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. And remembering our confirmation vows, we, we, uh, pl commit, we confess together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Show us your unfailing love, O Lord. May your priests be clothed with righteousness. I will grant peace in the land. Lord, keep this nation under your care. 
May your ways be known on earth. The needy will not always be forgotten. Create in me a pure heart, O God. And the Lord be with you. I'm going to pray the evening prayer this night. In fact, why don't you join me, okay? We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have this day so graciously protected us. We beg you to forgive us all our sins and the wrong which we have done. By your great mercy, defend us from all the perils and dangers of this night. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us. Let the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. I want to invite you to stay for uh, dinner, uh, supper in the parish halls, but let's stand to sing a hymn we have not sung in quite a while. All praise to thee, my God, this night. Please rise. Hymn 484. Nice to sing that hymn. Have a good evening. Stay for dinner, and I have a uh, story to share with you to hand out. <laughs> 